this is the, the fifth and obviously last uh, talk or conversation or presentation uh, which we wanted to connect with uh, the, this semester of the Studio of Metropolitan Architecture. And um, I know, I mean, speaking for us, as uh, I mean, you, our group of students, you're all obviously very tired and um, in a way you're all kind of just finished with, with your own work, which you're going to present tomorrow morning. Um, but, and you could say, yeah, what's the point in having this last moment of input um, even uh, when everything is already finished. Well, I mean, to give a more general point, I think we, we believe very much that uh, this semester is one of trying to define um, a topic, right? And uh, that topic we define until the very end. Uh, also in the hope that we can use it in some way in the next semester. Also in an attempt so to um, get a clearer idea of what metropolitan architecture, its representation, its imagery could be, or is not, or to what extent it's definable, uh, in order to start in the second semester uh, a more canon-like exercise. Now at the same time, um, this being the fifth uh, of a set of uh, presentations and lectures, uh, as I wanted to recall, we started with Christoph, for Haraway, who tried to somehow, through the word itself, define what metropolitan architecture could be. Um, um, we had a couple of other um, presentations amongst, for example, uh, Francois Charbonnet, who will be tomorrow in the jury, uh, almost literally making, showing work, which you could or could not connect to what we understood as uh, 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 the language of metropolitan architecture, if that would exist. Um, Louis Bant has always been, uh, I think, uh, for us, I mean, very much in the studio, and very much this, what I would dare to call, and, and I use simplistic terms, terms I hope our podcasts will, will question or challenge, uh, this, you could say, fundamental shift from his work, which we all know, and that's probably sim symptomatic for it. Uh, uh, this is the tractor, uh, science of technology. Oh, no, it's the la uh, last one. I mean, anyhow, sometimes in these uh, pictures of this book, you see this uh, typical, austere, uh, black and white pictures uh, of buildings in the American landscape, or even the American landscape itself. And then the work he did in the late 80s, early 90s, of which uh, this book, uh, Rule Without Exception, but also uh, the exhibition, Rome de Nuit, which he did in 92, and the Centre Pompidou became somehow uh, emblematic. You could say a shift from this kind of black and white picture um, from, let's say, the mid-70s towards uh, this very colorful, uh, full-color, gigantic size, um, detail-like pictures, often uh, of surveillance camera photographs, if not of the same grain uh, of that. Now, um, we were very much interested also in the studio to maybe understand or misunderstand uh, this graphical shift, and we invited you at the time uh, to, to work on one perspective, uh, a portrait rather than landscape, uh, which in one way or another carries in it uh, the same uh, sense of place, the same sense of uh, you know, negotiation with technology perhaps. Uh, because we felt that in one way or another it was a good device, a good vehicle uh, to represent uh, what we try to define as uh, metropolitan architecture. Now, of course, um, Stefano Graziani and Bas Prinsen, both, uh, I would say, uh, exceptionally good photographers, um, and, and both uh, people who have been very influential uh, to us, uh, ourselves as an office, us as the separate, as different offices here in both in form, and uh, as form uh, in, in general, uh, have both of them very much in one way or another, I would dare to say, a relationship with those bouts, uh, with the work of bouts, I think, I believe. Uh, so we thought it would have been a very good uh, occasion uh, to ask them about how we could or could not interpret uh, this, let's say, the last work of bouts, uh, bouts who died, uh, by the way, in 2014, and did not make much else since uh, his late 90s work, maybe apart from uh, the the print, you could say, of this size of technology, which was to a certain extent a, a reprint of the very same picture, or at least that's how I always understood it, uh, he used for his uh, Ronde de Nuit series, but then as uh, full option pictures, uh, very much in the logic 
uh, of his earlier work. Now, maybe already this is a bad interpretation. Um, I would like to give the work uh, both to us and Stefano. Um, and I promised that I would from time to time ask questions uh, to, to guide a little bit the conversation, if necessary. But perhaps uh, maybe to, um, to start um, a possible conversation. Um, are we right with that? Are there two balances? Stefano. Thank you very much so, uh, for the invitation and for having the chance of talking about the uh, boys with you and with us. So I took uh, one of the books he did in the, let's say, second uh, stage of his uh, production, which is, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it's well, very well known, but it, it was supposed to be a commission project for a museum in um, California. So, um, an assignment. Please, we are building up a new museum and we would like to have you, Louis Bolt, to do the photographs for us. And the response of Louis was uh, this one. This is a second version of the book. And it's about, uh, <coughs> it's autobiographical. So in that uh, area, in that um, bay, in that uh, region where he was uh, living and where he grew up before coming back, he was already living in Europe, uh, there was a kind of a chronicle uh, <coughs> event, so a murder, and uh, in the jury of the trial, his father was uh, part of uh, the jury. So his uh, response to this very precise assignment was... Uh, I will do something about uh, this uh, happening in uh, this area s uh, several years ago, in which I am kind of uh, uh, part of, because his father, he was uh, a part of, because his father was part of the, of the trial. And I'm saying that because there is a very big part of uh, autobiographical uh, effect in, uh, I think, in Louis Bolt, and I think in all Authors. So there is a very, of course, an autobiography, and is uh, the first, probably the first effect on the on the work. And uh, I met Louis Bolt several times. We were sharing uh, space, uh, lunches, and uh, smoking and drinking, and a uh, lot of talks. And uh, there are some uh, the beginning of this uh, text, which he was uh, writing. I think is very much, uh, <laughs> uh, how do you say, representative of how he. He was uh, reacting uh, towards uh, things. So in 1988, I found myself living in Milan, in my wife's house, observing and contributing to the deterioration of my third marriage. We had moved to Milan from Paris earlier that winter, giving up an apartment near the Place d'Enfer, where we had lived for the previous two years. <coughs> my wife, that had lived in Paris off and since 1979, and she loved the city. I hated it, or, or thought that I did. Uh, she turned hated in Mil uh, she turned hated Milan, where she had grown up, and felt that returning there was an ambition of the feet. So I think uh, Louis was really like that. So the, his way of observing the, the world uh, had this kind of auto dark uh, irony towards everything. So the first works <coughs> has been described by him like uh, autobiographical because it was basically the, the landscape he was uh, having in front of his window. He was uh, living here, not far from here. So it was something that was happening around him. So this new developing uh, of, for example, Park City or, for example, uh, areas like Candlestick Point or areas like uh, San Quentin Point were very familiar to him. And the aim of uh, these first works were showing uh, the obscenity, <laughs> how obscene the world would be transformed in, which I think is a, a very strong, uh, a strong uh, statement. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the point, uh, I think, is then, it, at the point it turned into something else. He moved to, to America, to Europe, uh, he changed uh, his way of doing uh, things. Is, uh, I think the way he was looking at things and was looking at life was the same and uh, didn't do anything more in black and white. He changed it because he felt he was a kind of uh, 
professional work, worker asked to do things that people knew he could do. So, for example, this the response was completely uh, moving from the initial idea of uh, his life. So he was kind of escaping from uh, his own uh, his own character, trying to change because uh, otherwise it, everything would have been transformed. Uh, his work would have been transformed into a style. Mm -hmm. So that was the big shift, and I think he did uh, many new, let's say, um, site-specific works, which were, for example, the the light thick uh, work or the things he did in Italy, which are pieces that has to be just seen there, so they cannot move, they cannot, uh, they have just to be seen there. And so he tried to find a second, uh, second life or a second uh, option for the, for his work, trying to cancel or to renew the, the beginnings. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was, uh, I think this is the, the, the idea I have of this particular moment. Other thing, very negative, he was uh, actually saying that everybody has kind of 10 years, <laughs> 10, 10 years time to, to develop his best part, the best part of his work. And uh, he was also saying, uh, I had that uh, at the very beginning, so he never really admitted that he was stopping, but uh, at the point he stopped. That's funny, the last comment you gave, because the last comment you gave is a bit different from the other comments, I think. Stefano. In the sense, I mean, that almost sounds like the acknowledgement of defeat, huh? that you accept the fact that you made your seminal work in the first ten years, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that you, uh, you survive all along the way, uh, being increasingly aware of your own autobiography. I mean, if you would read the work which comes afterwards like that, it's more a matter of survival than work you should take seriously. Um, I don't think the realization or the thing was saying was was uh, was realized at the early 90s. So when World Without Exception came out, mm -hmm. I think it's a process of uh, of understanding that. So. I don't think he planned to have 10 years, or well, this is what he said, or this is what can be assumed by, as, uh, as real. But it's something that happened. I'll, I'll start talking from here, and we can definitely And he will start talking from here. Sorry, sorry. No, Bas, I mean, so, so Stefano brings in this aspect of uh, autobiography. Um, but autobiography alone cannot be enough for uh, an artist to make work for the world, I would say. So what's your take I look, on that? Uh, I mean, but I, it's interesting because Stefano, of course, he, he, he knew. And I think this makes a big difference. It also uh, kind of corrects... In a strange way, if you know someone, it can correct your view on the work. You know, it can somehow eliminate certain problems or, or things that you have with the, with the work because it can be explained by the mm -hmm. person. You have an understanding because he's a bit, uh, he's, he has a certain character, you understand a certain way of working. I have not any relation like that with him, so I look at him like, uh, you know, like any other artist that is from the past and you look at it as a kind of a pure and uh, completely without, uh, almost, uh, without a personal, without a person behind. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to explain, but you don't, since you don't know the person behind, you understand there is a character behind, but you don't, uh, you cannot read it through the, through the character. Mm -hmm. And then I think this Regel on the Arsenal, it was, uh, I, I bought this book, I think it was the first book by Baltz I bought, but I bought it uh, with, you know, like you sometimes do by accident, uh, book, and you put it in your uh, in your library, and then it sits there, and then you accumulate other books of the same author, and you all of a sudden realize that this book is this by the same author. I almost cannot real. I almost cannot imagine that it's by the same person. So if you start to look at these earlier uh, uh, books, for which I particularly like, very very much Park City. 
as a kind of emblem of what he did. That's that's for me the most interesting. And then it's very difficult to understand this regel und Ausnahme as a as a work. It almost feels like a like a cut. Yeah. But it was an exhibition. Yeah, but it, it, was, it, also, uh, it was an exhibition, but it also feels like a deliberate cut yeah. in the sense that <laughs> you just put it off otherwise. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, me? Yeah. 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 Sure. We'll see if it happens. If it automatically jumps, it doesn't happen. Okay, go ahead. So I think I have the feeling that this book marked a cut. And really, literally, you know, so maybe it marked the cut of him going from from the States to Europe. Uh, but it also seems that it's a cut in the sense that maybe he grew a bit tired of the aesthetics that he mm -hmm. uh, uh, was and in a way, the aesthetic, in a way caught in. You know? The aesthetics being this. Right? Yes, I mean, the aesthetics yeah. being this. Also, this kind of a bookmaking. So yeah. this kind of a one... Uh, <laughs> One image, perfectly represented, quite small, in a big book, and then just 50 pictures in a row. No, very beautiful, very classical, very precise. Uh, but the but aesthetic also being two things, being this, and then I show it, uh, also being uh, this. Same being thing. the exhibition. But also being yeah. uh, this, the series, typically. Yeah, but and that's not this. the series. It's uh, this uh, and uh, no, and yeah. being this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that was what you could say the yeah. canon of Pals. Uh, yes, and you also understand that somehow, because he never uh, uh, showed in any of these early books uh, installation shows. Sure. So you also did not have an idea that these they were, were supposed to be yeah. in a grid. And I think, you know, I, I had this book, and also by accident I, I have seen, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, I think, St. Quinton Point, the one where also the color images are. Yeah, the first color, 89. Yeah. 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 So it's a very strange block of... Uh, the candlestick of, point. Yeah, the candlestick okay. point with... Uh, it's a kind of a block of images in a grid, then sometimes there is no image in the grid, and sometimes there is a color image in the grid. It's, it's very puzzling why, why he did it. And somehow in the book, you don't have that uh, interaction with, uh, with, with the work. You have a completely different interaction. And somehow when I was reading today, when I was going in the train and I was looking through the book, I also had somehow this idea that it might be that these two different uh, ways, so the, the impact of the installation and the way how you read the book, that there is a kind of discrepancy between the two. And I have the feeling that this rule, without exception, he tried to correct somehow. He tried to correct this, uh, because in, in this book you have installation views, you have one or two images of the series. You know, the series is not important in the sense in, 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 in this catalog. Of course, it's an exhibition catalog, but still, I think he was close involved, so you can read it as a correction. You know, sorry, you know, you were not reading it completely correct. Now look at it in this way. You mean he introduces the complexity of the way he was presenting? I think so. Yeah. Because say, if this is a typical picture now, it's of course shown in a leading way. Right? Yeah. This is the way he should have shown it before without the text. Yes. This is the way, let's say, uh, uh, this is the way they were shown in exhibitions. Yes. And all these ways he brings together in one book, and then he adds another chapter, uh, which is of course... Uh, which is his color. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, in a way, it's gradually, uh, we go to canvas. Yeah. It's weird, eh? because it's almost this whole... Rule with that exception is almost like the over complete, because he hardly made anything uh, His last book. Yes, but that's the, that's the next problem, of course. But we, we, we can come, we come back. to that. But then, but then uh, he later, adds it. Yeah. These are new pictures? Yes. Yeah. Fragments? Yeah, these? These, these, and then he shows also this. This is yes. how it was shown uh, Ronde Nuit. Right? Yes. It's basically what is brought all together. Totally different. But it's also true that you can see the difference only when you see both. Because if you would see the pictures alone, you would say, ah, oh, the guy went to color. <laughs> and yes. he cannot handle the camera very well. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you see here, it's all but on purpose. Huh? The thing that uh, the, the red one, this was made in Milano. And it has this Freud on the Freud uh, yeah. square, yeah. And it's about commuting. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not about uh, so there always is a there's always a, an intuition in the world, mm -hmm. which is also one thing is the picture. The other hand is what stays behind. So this intuition towards uh, city, as you were introducing, or towards uh, how the world uh, works, or no, how he thinks the world uh, is going, or towards where. Well, but absolutely. I was and reading. Uh, I was reading over lunch this obituary, right? Where I mean, yeah. he was quoted having been said. I don't, he couldn't verify that he was after, uh, I would say, showing Europe huh? in his last series, in the series in the late 80s, early 90s, at least, whether he couldn't verify the quote. But as you say, commuting um, or infrastructure, uh, I mean, if you talk Europe of the 80s, early 90s, that's exactly it is Europe, or not? Yeah, and his commuting life, as, a, as a human condition, yeah. as a, um, hmm. not the, uh, so, for example, in the commuting uh, thing, there's no people appearing, but the thing is that people is, uh, is involved in the, in the work. So the um, yeah, the intuition towards the future, I think, is the most uh, intriguing uh, character of his work. So, like the, for example, the the first works in the black and white, <coughs> the first black and white things, are about the obscenity and are about how the world would be in uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. So where the world would develop in the future, in a relative future, of course. Yeah, well, I think there we so arrive at a very interesting point, especially for for photographer. That is, where can you do that? Where can you say something about the future? Which is that spot? Because he managed very well to do it in his own uh, front yard, you know, in the place where he, which he knew very precisely which he knew every, what was obscene and what not, in a way. No? I mean, he was very... It was not a big choice for him to decide to photograph one thing or the other. He knew what was new, what was going to be kind of stupid and what not. No? Absolutely, but I find it really interesting what you say, in the sense that in an era, and not maybe we are only past that era, but I mean, certainly the last 10 years were very much like that, no? I mean, and even photographers do both very much like, like I mean, Link or so. But other photographers too uh, even push it further. Like the idea that what you want to show about the world, you need to go and see the furthest possible. Right? Mm -hmm. You see here an artist, if I call it that way, right, who is able to talk about, as you said, the future by right? talking about his own life, about talking about his neighborhood, and of course the neighborhood changes. But I mean, meaning he moves. <laughs> but as you say, he, he does not need to look for uh, a representation of today in the minds of I don't know what. No, he finds it in Milan, yeah. uh, where he lives at that moment, as he finds it in Paris, where he lives before, as he finds it in um, Irvine, because he lives around the corner. Yeah. That's interesting. How, how you, I mean, especially, I mean, Bas is a photographer who doesn't always photograph around the corner. How do you see that? Well, I think it's, uh, I, I, I would almost dare to say that he, he knew it in America and he had trouble with it in Europe. Uh, and I think uh, that's why there was there's a lot less work in Europe. Maybe this he was happy with, and then the rest was unreadable. The landscape is not readable, or the history is not readable. You're not uh, accustomed with it. You don't know when something is an anomaly, an anomaly when it's something normal, when it's part of history, when it's a progress or not. It's not and so I, simple. You mean. It's not so simple, I think. And I I, I find it also interesting that, that let's say in a way. Uh, uh, this sites of te technology is in a way uh, again a classic uh, 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 Louis Baal's book, mm -hmm. but in a way he goes back to his old uh, tricks. He, it's not anymore landscapes. It's just technology that could be anywhere. You know? it could be in Europe, but could also be in America. It's not anymore mm -hmm. uh, linked to a certain uh, spot. Mm -hmm. So I wonder. I mean, of course you can, but, but I would almost say that uh, if I look from a distance. That, that is a classic case of, uh, let's say, you move because you feel that you're not, uh, uh, you can't do enough in your own place, but then when you arrive to the new place, you actually realize that all you know is about the place when you uh, where would, came uh, from. Uh, would you consider these, I mean, I show now three pictures because they're here in this book, well, no, let's say four, five, huh? so yeah. let's say here, 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 yeah. here, here, like this, this yeah. kind of fact. Would you consider this a film? I mean, 
No, I wouldn't consider it a failure, but it doesn't, uh, since it didn't have a lot of... Uh, it was the best he could get. <laughs> there is so little that it's hard to call it a failure, because it's somehow it's so precisely edited uh, that it... Um, but it's, it's hard to have an opinion about it in the end, because you don't know where it sits within the work, you don't know... Where, it's almost like it's... Uh, thought that he had and he had to do and he did it well, but then he also didn't know anymore how to continue after that. And, uh, um, but maybe also because in Europe, you know, that you also have to understand that the European field of photography and, in, and the American field of photography, maybe the, the, Euro, the European part of photography was also getting extremely strong at that uh, moment, especially in Italy, and it was kind of exploding at that moment. So it might also be that he couldn't find a place where to insert uh, the things that he, where he had a place in, in America. Mm -hmm. Because we still con con consider him an American photographer. Yeah, yeah. We never say he's a European photographer. Never, ever. You would never, ever say this. While the, most of his life he lived in Europe. Yeah. Uh, you used to follow, I mean, Bas's comments are interesting comments, huh? Like, he, he goes to Europe, he, he needs to, he needs to move. He takes pictures in a totally different way, yeah? I mean, touching things you were seeing before. He doesn't dare to call it a failure, but he does somehow say, perhaps, that's what he could get out of it. And he's stuck. You see it like that as well? I think that, uh, if, uh, I don't know, what I find uh, mm, always uh, interesting is uh, the, um, the level of the intuition he, he can put into the, the work. And comparing it to other, we mentioned the new topographics or uh, other authors contemporary to him, mm, I wouldn't say it's a failure. So it always, uh, because it's so, uh, <laughs> it's also very remarkable trying to step out of the his stylish uh, way he is understood and trying uh, doing something completely different, which is something that a lot of people really cannot do because they, it's very difficult. Many couldn't do that and they found themselves uh, in a, a real failure, kind of. So maybe <laughs> money success, but if you compare to this uh, radicality, it's also possible to understand this as a much worse failure, if we call it failure. And uh, so, so the, the level of the intuition is always very much... Uh, but so, <laughs> but if, kind of... Um, I mean, you can argue also something else. You can also say it's not the problem of US and, uh, and Europe. You can, you can say it's the problem of landscape versus city. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, sorry. The, uh, the, the intuition or where the future would be. Uh, if at the beginning Louis Boss found that into what we now call landscape uh, photography, because we put that into a category, maybe he's uh, trying to do the same within uh, the side body, for example, so in the medical, how we are um, treated in hospitals, so the control people can have on bodies of other people's body, which is the same uh, concept, I guess, of the surveillance cameras it takes in consideration in the other world. So, and it was not too far from that, so the future was really that. So the evolution wasn't uh, possible to find uh, within the strict sense of the landscape, but could uh, have been possible to find it into the operations on how people interact with other people's bodies. Through no. CCTV, mm -hmm. through control, through medicalization. Medicalization is a kind of a big, big paradigm for that. How do we control other people's bodies? So how far can we go into the control of other people's bodies? So I think that was probably one big issue. I don't know if it was autobiographical because it was kind of getting sick. sick. Yeah. Can be, or cannot. 
They saw that in front of, for example, John Gossage, John Gossage is just a disappear, <laughs> so I think, in front of the thing, because he went on doing the things. He can come here doing a series and take out a fantastic book, mm. but... But it is somehow true that uh, soon after this series, and already with this series, he gradually stops taking photographs himself. Uh, up to a point, and of course you could say, wasn't that also ahead of its time? I mean, say like people like uh, Ruth, ten years later or seven years later, a little bit later in any case, uh, starting to uh, uh, buy pictures or appropriate pictures. I mean, in the mid nineties, no, is that uh, the, the photographs of the the stars, for example, uh, which Ruth's Yeah, but that might all be true. But mm -hmm. I think it is interesting to understand when that happened. And, mm -hmm. You know, what kind of what triggered that? Is, yeah. it, is it really this moment of moving from one? place to the other? Is it a personal story? We, we, we don't really know, but it's, I mean, it's interesting to contemplate that, that uh, let's say, the things that you know that you can do in the place which you know best might not be the things that you can do in the place that you don't know. No. So you have to find a new way. And I think the interesting part here in, the, in, in this work is that you see here but the thing trying is, to find, you know, and it's really un it's still unclear, I think, also to to say, but oh, if it's good or not, you know, but it, it maybe it doesn't matter so much. Sure. But you can also see something else, I think, um, and that doesn't necessarily speak for him, but maybe I'm wrong, so I hope you disagree with me. Uh, but, see, the work he has in the 60s and 70s is heavily adapted to minimalist and conceptual art practices. I mean, in a way, you could say he lends the aesthetic, uh, and he uses it in photography. I mean, the work is so appealing because it looks like uh, minimalist or conceptual art, but it's, it's a photograph. Uh. Uh, in other words, the reason why also it's so easily canonized today is that it, together with that work of that time, it's canonized because it became to a certain extent conservative today. Everybody likes this. Uh. Mm -hmm. This work, I would dare to say, coincides with artworks of that period, mm -hmm. which are also very similar. And, you know, you see the video art appearing, you see, uh, oh, the, in a way, the aesthetic is again very similar. So you could also see his work always as uh, uh, emulating the current art practices in photography. Uh, I think it's not completely true in that sense, because he was really part of it, this was not emulating. Yeah, okay, but I mean... No, I mean, I think this you have to really know, mm -hmm. you have to... And it's also knowledge, you know, I mean, it was uh, not that he was uh, looking at that Rocher, you know, it was, I think, the, almost the other way around, you know, you don't, it's not clear, at least, uh, well, it's there. Not clear, huh? Huh? And yeah. that, that's also the interesting part. Yeah. And what I find also, Bas, very interesting is that very often when people talk about evolution, you have the tendency, and of course he tries to give us a clue, huh? yeah. because we, we have a tendency to look at, say, the very early work, say, mm -hmm. uh, roughly this, or even earlier, you know, yeah. like track houses, yeah. so. And then we say, hi, there was that, and then there was uh, uh, Ronde Nuit. But of course what he yeah, tries no, to yeah. show in this book is that, yeah, then gradually you had this, mm -hmm. uh, and this is already quite different, uh, and then you had uh, this, uh, this uh, fire, sir, uh, and then you had uh, already, uh, d gradually the, the focus is, is somehow disappearing, color is even appearing, uh, um, the, the, the perfect frame gradually becomes less and less important, one could say. Or at least it's, it's at least ambiguous, and gradually then you you get this. So in other words, I think if we are looking for an explanation, he tries to give it to us in the same, in the very book, I, I would say. Or at least he tries to make us believe that there was not such a thing as an A and a B, but there was a slow evolution towards uh, acknowledging color photography, uh, acknowledging zoom, uh, working differently with light, working differently with framing, up to the point that you get this. Or not? When you, while you were talking, uh, something else that we could uh, underline is, for example, the, how we dealt with the titles. So it's something that uh, in the beginning is uh, very strictly geographical, so related to a place that is uh, Park City, that is Candlestick Point, that there is uh, that is uh, some kind of point like Nevada. So geographical. Uh, Spots you can pin on a map, and this is uh, disappearing towards uh, different uh, titles that are supposing different uh, ideas. 
So I think it's uh, this uh, answer we can find in towards uh, this book is also in the in the presence or less of uh, geography, let's say, into titles. This is, for example, very geographically set, but has a strict connection with the chronicle uh, fact that is this is a place where um, I think some politicians were killed. So under a stylish point of view, it's a perfect uh, topographic uh, photograph, mm -hmm. colors, somebody like uh, a topographer could do, but there was this uh, caption saying uh, what has happened there. So it has a chronicle uh, relation with, uh, with the geography and the history of that place. So I think it's uh, also part of this uh, evolution you were uh, underlying, uh, flipping the, the pages of the uh, roots without uh, exception. So there are many, in fact, I saw rich in the, <laughs> the work. And, uh, However, uh, producing less and less in terms of quantity, I think it's growing and growing on the other side. So whether the amount of picture is decreasing, then the amount of ideas is probably... I mean, I know, of course, it's a debate, and for the sake of the format, I, I like to kind of, I, I would say, exaggerate a little bit. If I exaggerate a bit, I'd say, I hear two very different voices. Huh? I mean, it's not entirely true, perhaps, but... Say, say, Bas, who's kind of worried about, say, uh, the lack of uh, consistent production towards the end and ask himself uh, how to place that work. Uh, and, and I would say, I put question marks next to the quality of the very last work, roughly. And you, who the more you talk about it, the more you seem to almost argue that his best work is the last work. Is that true? I don't, I don't know if it's, it's the best, but... Uh, Most ideas, you say. Yeah. It, more I aware of they his make work. Uh, the, that the earlier work may be stronger. If he would have continued doing the... Uh, yeah, but I think there I agree. I mean, Lausanne the, point, uh, or... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> F, 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 yeah, no, you could or, not have uh, done whatever, that. then... But I think there it is interesting, more. because I mean, I, 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 lo I, I don't need to defend them, or True. I don't need to... I have no, no agenda at all there. So, so I'm, I'm just interested in the fact that you can do this uh, work, and then you have to... You have to cut it somehow. As an artist, you have to make this break because you know you have to. You cannot continue. You know the last book is probably the one that you think oh, it was probably the one that I made too much. You know, I mean this this happens, and then you have to find a new way. And I, I'm I'm curious what, what, how he made that decision. And it's also interesting to see what the how it was taken by the outside world, because of course you can do these things for yourself, but then you, they are embedded in, uh, in people find something about it, they think about it, they look at it, and they have an opinion. Right? Mm -hmm. but and, and, and I'm mostly interested in this fact of that, that he, in the States, he re-photographs landscape, which is starting to be urbanized, which is also, you could say, a kind of a almost virgin urbanization, you know, it's a urbanization that is taking place on, on nothing, and then he photographs it normally at the moment when they are still building it, so it's not inhabited yet, there is no patina, there is no nothing, or it's destroyed, you know, one or the other. It's either destroyed or it's being built up. And then he goes to Europe and it doesn't exist. This condition doesn't exist. The condition of the empty landscape where, you know, things happen, and because it happens on a, on a, uh, because it happens in the States on a kind of nothing, on the tabula rasa, mm -hmm. you can read it very precisely. You, know, you can say, ah, because of this and because of that, blah, blah, blah. And then you come to Europe and he's in the city and all these things are, let's say, not anymore applicable. All the things that he learned and that he was looking at are somehow, let's say, the tools are not anymore in his hand. So he has to re- learn or he has to re see. So I, that then I understand that he starts to do these things, how to move through the city, how to and maybe there's a clue there. Maybe there's a clue in the technology. Maybe there's a I think he's just looking for ways to read well how you say <coughs> the future or the progress. Uh, and I think these two landscapes are 
needs different ways of looking. Mm -hmm. And I think that is interesting because you find that yourself also. You know, when I go to China, I don't know half of it. I just don't know. You know, I have to find new ways. I want to. I think we talked a lot about topics and new ways and how to approach it. I want to. In the second point, that's for a bit later. Still, I want to go later to to the question of metropolitan. But before. I wanted to ask, and I wanted to start with you, Bas, a question about, in a way, quality. Quality of the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe in relationship to that, and maybe to start that discussion of quality, uh, framing. And I, I took this here, this picture, because the right picture uh, is actually a picture, and you know very well, I think, from uh, Park City, uh, which he cuts differently in the book. And you could argue he cuts it differently, <coughs> so it all of a sudden fits in this series, which he makes... Uh, in the, towards the end of the book, which uh, is the last series, and all of a sudden the picture looks very different, I think. Huh? I mean, it's so a very it looks different picture. Very different because it's next to the other. Yeah, of yeah. course, but for the two reasons, I say yeah. the combination yeah. plus the cut. And it's even so much zoomed that, in a strange way, it's not even so sharp. I mean, so, where it, which somehow relates very much to, say, the, uh, the what we were just discussing, what was this, uh, or, or say, uh, that. Huh? So I was wondering, uh, you, especially, Bas, who, I mean, for you, I think, in your work, the framing, sharpness, uh, uh, in a way relatively classical elements of, of, of uh, say, could the composition of the image of a cushion. Um, and you've been uh, talking a little bit also about uh, the second edition, very late, and he made it two, three years before he died, uh, with its, uh, what is it, Sites of Technology, where in a way some of these pictures he'd used, especially the ones of the, the, the big computers, he republished all of a sudden very beautifully framed, all of a sudden super sharp, so and how, how do you relate to that? I mean, to what extent is this, and I think it's a difficult discussion in contemporary photography, how, you, how important do you find that? Framing, quality, uh, sharpness, um, and can you relate to that in the discussion of the last work of Pals? I think it all has to do with how consistent the series is. You know? mm -hmm. It depends, you can do whatever you want, I think. Also, I think you go, you really can go back to your own work and cut it. There is no. Uh, I, uh, the more I think about it, the less problems I have with it. So you used to have problems. With it. I used to have problems, with it, but less and less because I think uh, the work has to continue and it has to live and it cannot be kept in a cage and you know it cannot. Uh, uh, it, I mean, you can only do it when it's defined already. You know? When when you have defined when there is a book or when there was an exhibition or blah blah. After that, I think you're again free to reuse it. And quality? How do you define quality? I mean, maybe first of all for yourself, how do you define quality? What, when is, I mean, because if there's not any more an issue of quality, anybody is a photographer, I'd say. So I guess it's an important item for, your, for you as an author. Uh, how do you define it for yourself? It's not a much different answer than the one before. <laughs> <laughs> It's all in the sequence, and in the, it's the sequence of the works that you it's did It's consciousness. Before. It has to have... I think quality basically means that the work that you make now has some reverberation to the work that you did before, and most probably has reverberations to the work that you will do after. And I, uh, next to that, there is a lot possible. And is that maybe what sometimes you have trouble with here? That you're not sure if it has reverberations to before, certainly not after, because nothing came after. <laughs> and if there's something came after, it seems like a correction. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's weird, no? I yeah, mean, I that he made that, yeah. and then all of a sudden, say, ten years later, say, oh, fuck, um, I'm not part of the canon, I need to make this. Because he knew he was, he was, he was sick, so he knew he was going to die. So then he makes that book almost as if to say, hey guys, if you think I didn't produce anything anymore in, in the, Europe, yeah, in Europe so. that's not true, huh? I made that and he publishes it. No? Is that what he might have done? Yeah, I took some old work uh, out and published uh, much later. Well, yeah, that work, essentially. Yeah. I mean, not so much this, but literally this setting yeah. here. This yeah, because work. there is no work of the, of this, uh, of the red uh, landscapes. It doesn't have a book, no? No. But this one, yes. which is also, I find, also strange to be in his literal work or in his literal way of working with books as a kind of a output, that that work is then kept out somehow. But it makes it intriguing, of course. It makes it, it makes it an interesting point, and it makes it also important thing to look at. 
something was something was there that either he was not happy or he was not sure or uh, didn't know how to put it. So or maybe he didn't want to fit the uh, always in this uh, book uh, book production or so uh, being uh, able to do projects which uh, could be out of the book. I think that also to be yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think it's a. Um, Okay, so last last question before uh, to, to round up. Metropolitan architecture. I mean, you mentioned it in the very beginning. In the very simple terms, you say, uh, you know, the early work of the American work of Baltz is covering the even covered field hmm, in all its guises. The late work of uh, of Baltz is metropolitan architecture. I mean, you did not say it like this, but you talked about these two very different topics. I mean, you said the city, but maybe that's that. What about it? Would, would it be a valuable uh, hypothesis? I think it's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's basically where he lived. So I mean, he lived in the landscape, he photographed the landscape. He lived in the city, he photographed the city. When he reframed somehow that it's much more difficult to represent the city than the landscape for him. But it's unclear to me if that's because he's born grew up in the landscape and therefore he's accustomed with it. But, but, but is that really true with us? Because, let's be honest, he, he was of course living in the States, but I would argue he probably lived in the city in the States and not necessarily there where he photographed, uh, you know, uh, Park City. He wasn't living there, there. I mean, maybe as a kid yeah, he was living in the Yes, and I'm, I'm also, I moved to the, to, the, to the city when I was 18, but before I, I lived in the country, or in, the, in a village, I, I can still more easily understand the landscape than I can understand the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so that's it's, more, uh, it's not a matter of, of how long you were in a certain spot, or I think it just has to do with, with where your roots are, in mm -hmm. that sense. Are, are, these, are these photographs, I mean, are these photographs like this, this series, the last series, are these unique? I mean, amongst photographers no, it's kind of that Tillmans, generation? But uh, maybe Tillman said it after. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, Tillman, that's a good reference. Yeah. Huh? Much before. Uh, I mean, Baltz did it earlier yeah. too. Yes, of course. Yeah. It's very Tillman's, you say. That's the photography you think of. No, now I think, no, only when you showed the. Uh, show this, yeah. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I thought, yeah, that's really a kind of. Well, so this is Tillman's, but what is that? Huh? There's also Paul Graham, I think, which is uh, more analytical towards uh, the works he made in Japan. Or so I think he also built up a reference for other people. Yeah, but it's also Japan. Italian somehow. I mean, uh, Italian color photography was yeah, made. Yeah, it was it, much more uh, 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 like this than the German color photography, for instance. He has been uh, working a lot in, uh, in Italy at the end. So more than than what he, he, he uh, let people know. But there was also this uh, Paolo Costantini who was a uh, um, curator at the CCA for a short time. And he also died very young, he was uh, 37. And uh, he involved uh, Louis Boltz coming in Italy, in Venice, for example, where Venezia Marghera was done, which is uh, very... So if we start from the... The 70s, which they works that could look very apocalyptic, apocalypse because it's very apocalyptic. Uh, but they always do. They always do. Yeah, the end yeah. is even more the, the the ones in Venice and Marghera because he's talking about the exploitation of uh, everything. So how the uh, human being has exploited the <laughs> entire planet basically, and he found that in Venice because basically he has been invited there. And later he could live there. But it's very, it's more catastrophic uh, than uh, the, the beginning. That uh, under a, a formal point of view could could look like uh, more about the catastrophe because they are black, they are mm -hmm. fire, they are, there's a very so it's a kind of uh, but disaster. Again, but isn't it again pictures who have to compete with television images, with video images, with MTV? I mean, we were talking ninety one, ninety two. I mean, you need to be make much more powerful images. I mean, you have other so he's following. Uh, I think so. Or following, or uh, yeah, tries to react. I mean, if you he look at his yeah. his portrait in the back of yeah, the I mean, you look at him. Yeah, you you can somehow understand. Why is he there? The glamorous boy. No? <laughs> 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 no? 
the Duran Duran. Yeah, yeah. but he, he, I mean, he, he befriended Jean Nouvel in the, in the early 90s. No? He, be, he, he took pictures of the, 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 the what is it, the restaurant, the, the hotel, uh, St. James. There's, there's, there's a picture of him in the hotel St. James in the bathroom. Uh, you can find it on the internet. But, and I don't know what happened with these pictures, and I don't have a, an idea of which pictures he exactly took, but he did pictures for Jean Nouvel. And there was cocaine. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, Lots of horizontal mirror surface. Uh, <laughs> lots of horizontal mirror surface. <laughs> 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 Long surface. Yeah. Can you click on it? Can you connect it? I have a picture. I have a picture of him in the even more glamorous. But okay, I mean, so metropolitan architecture, guys, does it make sense? I mean, what, what is it? Uh, in pictures. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it says it all. Right? That's yeah. metropolitan yeah. architecture. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. What else to say? After this, no, thank you. Nothing anymore. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>